Was? I have deleted programs that I don't use that have no purpose to me. Downloaded or uh, removed um, two programs that I downloaded recently to see if that's the fucking problem since they were newer, but they shouldn't have been because they were both off. But you know, you never know. Sometimes they just some of these things like to like fuck with you and ruin everything you were trying to do. So I took those out. Ran optimization on the Streamlabs, so we'll see if that does anything. I mean, it's really great because in five minutes I gotta run upstairs and say goodnight to my kids. So you can see, I pretty much finished off the uh, majority of the fucking shit here. I have no idea what held it up, what's fucked it up. Could be fucked up now. Here, you know what happened last time? As soon as I touched my fucking phone, it died on me. Let's see what happens. Huh? What do you say? Let's check it out. Yeah, let's see what happens if I check it. Oh. This is going to be interesting. It's going to echo back. Ready? Let's see. Oh, it's in my headphones. I'm right. I forgot to turn it off of the uh, echo. So far, no drop frames. I mean, beggars can't be choosers, I guess, at this point. If it works, it fucking works. If it doesn't, it doesn't fucking, and I'll probably get on streaming. I had some fun, interesting shit to talk about today, and it's all fucking gone now. It's kind of bothersome. Let's give my kids a kiss goodnight, and I'm grabbing a fucking beer. And maybe I'll feel like talking again. In the meantime, I'm gonna just listen to this fucking asshole on here. Nobody's gonna show up tonight because I mean, I fucking. See, it's fucking ridiculous. So here's the, here's what's gonna piss me off. Here's here's why I'm angry, especially today, because you see, you now as I was ranting earlier about work, that's a, that's one thing. But see, the other thing that pisses me off is I literally was watching a thing today talking about ways to improve, uh, you know, uh, to get a lot of followers and and stuff. Now they were talking specifically about Instagram, but he's like, it could work on YouTube, Twitch, whatever. It's also about being consistent and putting the same stuff up so your people that would come to follow you and, and come to see you would know exactly what to get, when they're going to get it, and all that shit. And I've been trying damn fucking hard to make that happen. To try to be on here at 8 o'clock on Wednesday nights and be here at 8 o'clock on Thursday nights and be here at, you know, at um, what, 7.30 or whatever on Sunday nights and be here on Monday nights. Uh, you know, admittedly, I can't guarantee, like, these past few ones have just been bonus nights. Starting Monday, I'm back to Sun's Karate, so it won't be until after 9. But, you know, I've been trying to keep my fucking schedule. 
In fact, so much so that I'm telling my wife that we're probably not going to be able to, you know, uh, like, you know, like Sundays during the day, I'm not going to be able to do stuff so that I can stay. I'm, well, I may, I was going to say, I'm not going to keep that schedule. I'm shifting that schedule, hopefully, to Sunday so I can keep at least the hours of broadcasting that I've been doing. That is to say, that if I do two hours, three hours, whatever, I can keep it. But the fact that this fucking thing is giving me so much shit every fucking time anymore, it seems right now. I cannot figure it the fuck out. I mean, I literally went through, like, you know, anything that might even vaguely rem remotely cause a fucking issue. I took it away. I mean, I took away... Um, uh, like I said, I, I installed Fortnite on here so that my son could actually teach my daughter how to play the game without having to use, like, his account, because his account, like, is... Which is actually my account, but anyway. It's neither here nor there. It's like, you know, he's, he's on my PlayStation account. So he was using that, and he's, like, crazy high levels. But my daughter wants to learn how to play it. So I said, okay, well, I'll... I'll you know, I have an account, a secondary account that I did for my phone to try that out. And, you know, I'll try to get in there. And it worked. And it was on here, but they hadn't had a chance to sit down and work with it together. But I took it off. It's gone. Poof. Because it may have been causing that issue. You know, it was something that was installed after, you know, the last good stream, but before that piece of shit last stream, and before I tried it, like, what, seven, eight times to start it this time? So, it's gone. And now my CPU is running at 25%, not even. So, something was fucked up and running all the fucking time, apparently, because... The CPU usage used to be about 60%. And I would get a good stream out of 60%. It would go above that and it would go to shit. But now it's, you know, now it's cruising at 25. So something was running that I took off. I don't know what it was, but I took it off and it's gone. I went through anything like, like, the, this computer came with, like, Candy Crush already installed on it. I've never opened the fucking thing. Guess what's gotten ripped? Candy fucking Crush. It had a demo of Minecraft. Gone. Everything, anything that, like, I have not touched, that had no purpose, that's been just sitting here because I was like, ah, I don't give a fuck. It's not causing me any problems. It's gone. Every fucking one of them. I got some free music, you know, mixing program thing for this uh, audio pod. Took it off. It's gone. It's, it has no purpose for me. So. Here's fucking hope. Why did my music disappear entirely? Get your fucking bitch ass back on. I am so fucking pissed off now. I was in a good mood. I really was. I, I, I feel bad. I feel bad for anybody that even fucking thinks about coming in here. Now you got a rainy maniac. So the person that was actually laughing today and having a pretty good time. Despite the fact that my office is filled with fucking flies. I don't know if there's this fucking thing that tells me if frame skips at 25%, I'm gonna throw the fucking thing out the window. So now's as good as time as any to mention I have shit for sale. All the shit for sale is to be put to funds to improve this stream and my fucking equipment and like and my supplies. Posters for sale on two society studios dot com. Twelve by eighteen, they're my view of tulips, something, something, something. Oh, uh, covers shipping has Certificate of Authenticity, because it's the first run. It's going to tell you that. It's going to tell you, um, you know, it's signed by me. I know it's worthless, but whatever. Um, uh, certificate of Authenticity, signed, date. Oh, they're numbered. It's 1 through 50. Four have been sold so far, so it's 4 through 50, I guess, now at this point. Um... They're very good. They're nice posters. I just keep them in here. I moved them inside so because of all the fucking rain. I want to make sure I had them inside so I could not get them damaged. Um, but the the photo of what they are, the painting or whatever, is right on the homepage. Um, I 
Two Society of Studios dot com. There. I did my selling. You can try the Society Six store too, but those prices are just getting harder and harder to look at. I mean, I'm honestly trying to figure out somewhere else I can go because I looked at a frame print that is smaller than the poster I'm selling. And yes, they're framed. They're not terrible frames, but the, the frame print was $42. And I was like, holy shit. That's disgusting. So I am debating whether or not I'm staying with Society6 for much longer. I mean, at least they don't have a, uh, what's it, Cafe Press? Cafe Press used to have, like, you know, like a, you could have a really shitty store for free, but then if you want some of their good shit, you got to pay for it. But the thing was, you could all have them automatically deduct from any sales you made, which is fine if you made sales. But if you didn't make sales, it was like, hey, you owe us $20. You know, hey, you owe us $20. And it's like, hey, uh... If you don't pay, we're going to shut down your big store. And, but they wouldn't do it. <laughs> I had shit that was up there for sale for years. And I hadn't paid them in at least seven years. <laughs> and it still was up for a while. So who knows? But anyway. So yeah, there's my whoring out. Like, whatever. I'm done. I'm so done tonight. So maybe after I have a little alcohol on me, I'll feel fine. All right, let me, let me be right back. Let's be a real test, see if it'll actually come back.
God, I love beer. business shit, because all this shit's been fucked up. See, and I, I want to really, like, try to stress some shit to explain why I'm, like, I'm, I'm fucking conniption, like, having a conniption fit because of all this. Alright. Like, here's, here's the thing right now. Right now, I am going through a situation regarding my artwork that I don't know how I can work properly anymore. And, um, here's the test, let's see. Get this open. Um, So here's here's the deal. Um, I have been stumbling on something, and I, I pointed it, tried to point it out last time. I don't know whether it ever came through. To be quite honest with you, because last stream was so bad that it cut away two hours worth of stream time. So I have no idea whether it was seen or not. All right, but I've been futzing around with some stuff while I've been working, just just fucking around in. in Basically, creating of shapes. I don't even know how else to put it, right? Um, and then I've been continuing to mess around with them. Like, they, they started off as just doodles. And they started getting more and more intricate. They started getting more and more complex. And um, I, I'll be honest, I think I'm leaning towards making them actually a painting style. There's some complications with that. The first is that um, I have no idea how to do it. That's the big one. That's a big problem. Um, and what I mean by that is it's hard right now to even figure out like right now I'm doing these in, in just black and white sketches um, in pen when I'm usually at work, I've been doing, I was doing some graphite sketches, um, yesterday, all, all throughout the day. And I tried a colored pencil sketch and it didn't work out very well. And I think it was because I was trying to use color for, you know, like with it at the same time before I figured out the actual, uh, stroke, you know, mark making part of it. Um, what it will do regarding style wise is it will be a shift. It will be a, the little dashes are likely gone. Okay. Um, color is not, and that's going to be a, a big thing. The color will not disappear. It's just going to shift uh, pretty extremely in how it's done on on canvas. Um, I was trying to, to explain it to my friend um, today, and I was, you know, and, and I mean, he gets it, he knows what I'm talking about, so it's not like he's, I'm having trouble with it, but I was, um, you know, going through and, and talking to him about how, like, you know, look, I, I have this plan, it, it, what I'm thinking about these and, and what it could do. It's just going to be like I'm definitely. It's stepping in towards a modernist point of view. The trick of it is to find a way to pull it off without looking forced, uh, and that's where the the gamble 
really is going to be. That's where I, like I said, I can't, I think when I tried to do it, the color was forced. It really looked bad. Um, but it's not that I, I want it to be devoid of color. It's just that I don't know how to do it. Like, I have to figure out the mark making first. Like, that's the thing I had. And the trick of this is that the doodle started as literally random shapes and, and movements um, just kind of interwoven together. They're just sort of fractal patterns, and they just would kind of pour together, and suddenly they kind of began, once I got to towards certain parts, um, and it was much later actually, like like a day or two later, that everyone's like the people I showed it to were like, oh, that kind of looks like this, or that kind of looks like that, and it was like, ooh, what if I could make it where I start with that? In other words, like one looked like an apple, you know, actually looked like kind of like a cut open apple, but like what if I started with an apple and did a still life and I could do it with, the, you know, instead I'm doing it with these little marks, I'm doing it with these larger weird intersecting patterns. Um, But again, to maintain a sense of spontaneity um, without making it look, like I said, like, oh, I'm definitely filling in the space or whatever. Like, um, and as I was saying to my buddy, I was like, I, in a weird way, I'm going to have to minimize stuff in order to make it complex as hell. And that's, so I'm, I'm, I'm already right now in this weird temperamental spot because all day, that's all I can think about. Well, that and what it dumb fucks were at the Van Gogh Museum. That's another story. Um, I'll explain that one. So, but in my head tonight, I was sitting, you know, today, all day, I'm sitting there going, like, if we take this painting, if I were to do this painting in the way I'm planning, Okay. And I'm not going to go into huge details because I really don't know how this works. And I'd like this to be my style, so I don't want anybody to steal it. It will, first off, it will shift this channel. Um, my plans, my hopes that one day someone would like take this photo with me or, or you know, pick a subject that's kind of similar and paint along with me. And we have conversations and I can help them talk about stuff. I mean, I'm not, I don't really consider too much art instruction as much as the art critiquing. And so that can, part can still stick around. Um, but anything wise, people like, or I would be like, oh, you can try this, or this is what I'm, I, I, that's going to all fade away, because I literally will have no idea what I'm doing. So no point in me saying, like, oh, well, I'm using this, because I know this will work. Now I have no idea what I'm going to be doing. Um, so that part will shift a little bit. This, it will, once I get to that point, that I feel comfortable doing that on canvas, this whole, everything will shift. Everything will change. Um, But like if I were doing this painting right now, all the texture's gone. That that this little all these little dots trying to emphasize the kind of lava rock, I guess, nature of this stuff is gone. Doesn't exist anymore. Can't. Because there'd be too much other stuff going in here, part patterns moving in and out, you know. Uh, this section might be one color, this section might be a different one, this section would be like and that's it. There would be there's not gonna be these little interaction mixtures of color like this. I want to be clear about that. Like this area blue could potentially have three or four segments that would be built into it, if not more. Um, but to try to replicate again, like the, the using the color pattern to replicate the uh, lava of it or whatever, like the, like I said, the porous nature of the stone, gone. Can't exist. Um, you know, little elements here within the bamboo, likely gone. Um, but again, they'll be kind of replaced, like, <clears throat> ah, beer burps. Where the green is here, all right, this little, one little area could be one little section of green and as one little hole. And this little bit here could be an orange red, as, yeah, one hole where it may actually have a line of red on the outer edge of it or whatever. That are intersecting, interacting with them, but it's not going to be in little dashes alternating back and forth. That's that part of it is likely gone of my work if this all works to plan. And I don't know if it will. So, like I said, right now I'm in this weird spot where I want to keep the channel going, 
keep working consistently as long as the computer will fucking let me. Piece of shit. Sorry. I'm really mad that I just did not come on all the time. Um, okay, it sounds like my headphones are dead. Great, great, great. Okay, so we're going to do something else now for that. I think I have a plan. It should be okay. Well, uh, music actually happened in the background. Um, but, so like, it's, it's this weird spot where, like, I want to dive into it. I want to fucking hit it, and I want to try it as desperate as I could. But I know its results are going to be disastrous if I do it without a plan. And so my plan is to hit this fucking goddamn chair. <sighs> my plan is to keep working on these sketches off camera, in my sketchbook, at work, uh, in my notebook, at home, whenever I can, not visible here. And then what I want to do is I'm going to scan those sketches into Photoshop and I'm going to be playing with some colors and, and, and try to kind of come up with plans that will work to represent specific ideas of color and light. In other words, um, like say, say this was an apple. We'll just say that's an apple. You know, the Photoshop version of it, I will attempt to make like an apple sitting there with the shadow on this side, let's just say. But knowing that really my plan is to, okay, well, these shapes or whatever that I have are going to be my shadowy area. So now this is a purple, this is a blue, this is a deeper red, this is, you know, whatever, however it's going to interact with each other. Um, come up with ideas like that. Though, in practice, it may very well be, here's an apple, and lighting is coming this way, so now I've got a, you know, and it's, it's a more forward light, so only this small sliver will be, uh, you know, my shadowy area. So it's, it's that stuff I have to kind of, you know, work through first. I don't think... It'll be necessary, it, it may become necessary, and I don't know whether it becomes a situation where I have to draw whatever I'm gonna do first. Like I have to do a still life or whatever. I have to do a portrait, you know, or whatever, or whatever it may be. I have to do all that first in this patterning, take it in Photoshop, lay it all out, and then come into the canvas. I really don't want to be in that point. I don't wanna feel like I'm just putting down the specific thing in this. I'd like to make sure I can do it freestyle more than that. Um, I just would like to have an idea first of what works, what doesn't. You know, if you look at like early paintings I did, um, like going back to like the first year of college and stuff, there's some parts where it was like, like the first like self portrait I did was wild. I mean, it's got fucking, it's, it's almost pointillistic. It's not really done very much in a Van Gogh-esque style, if you will. It's very pointillistic, um, the, the, other than it's thick dashes, but they were nothing but dashes. There was nothing really working. Uh, there was a bit of underpainting, that's it. And it was like literally every color was in every section. Like it was just, just this big swirling mess of shit. Um, that may still, you know, but that was an experimentation to get control of the brush stroke. Then paintings after that tended to fall under like, well, okay, I'm going to focus on how I handle shadow versus how, you know, instead of worrying about light or I'm going to worry about this element and not really give a shit. Like there's some landscapes I have where the grass is just got awful. It's literally just a big slab of green and it's nothing really specific. Uh, and there's not a lot of variety in it. But then the uh, tree area is much, you know, like, I was definitely breaking down things in sing singular elements um, and working on those first. Um, so it's going to follow that type of idea, too, I think. I'm going to be breaking into elements of it to get it to work. I'll be honest. I am beyond petrified. 
And the problem is, like I said, it's right now even, half my brain is telling me, throw this painting out and get to work. And that's not a good place. It's a very easy place to fuck this up. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, Let's see if this will work. That should be my studio. Now connected to Galaxy S9. Okay. Alexa, set your volume for seven. Alright. I think this will work. I started trying to listen to this today, but it didn't really. Uh, browse, browse, browse. Okay. Uh, what was it? What was it? Okay, I guess I have to put in the actual. There, oh, there was. There was Granat. Killer Granat. Alright, and I don't know which one's the best one, so we're just picking one. I got a viewer. If you're there, if you can type in the notes, like like in the um, chat screen there, is, is this stream coming through? <laughs> I'm really terrified right now. This shit has not been working for me. I mean, it's at 25%. There's no reason it shouldn't be. Chorus and orchestra of the Welsh National Opera. Carlo Rizzi. I hope it's a good version of it. I have no idea. I haven't listened to this one yet. Und kleiner Einer. In case anybody doesn't know, by the way, if you're a fan of Tool, or if you're not really a fan of Tool, even still, uh, Tool's... Um, Song the Eye of On Satan, which sounds very, very scary, and you know, sounds like it's a you know, gonna be a satanic song, and it's you know, Aina uh, Kaina Aina, you know, like it's very you know, cr crazy sounding. Uh, it's a cookie recipe, I believe, for vanilla sugar cookies. I could be wrong on that one. Um, but what I understand is they're quite delicious. People have made them. So, just an FYI. I was literally listening to it right before. I decided to give the stream one last fucking try. I'm not kidding. I was ready to, like, literally stop the streaming entirely. But I don't want to because, again, as I've, I've said on here a couple times... It's been keeping me working steady. And that's a big thing. That's a very important thing. You know? And that's why I get pissed off when the stream goes, you know, cock balls sideways. It's like, all right, where's my white? Where's the guy? Uh, since we had all these issues, we'll go to about 10.30 or so. I mean, I normally I prefer to wrap it up by 10 uh, on work night, especially when it's been as rough a day as it has been. But 
I was hoping to, I was actually hoping to wrap it up by 10 and get to work on some of the sketches again, but like I said, I, I owe it to, to the fact that this fucking thing was a pain in the balls and, you know, got fucked up and I want to make sure I at least fulfill some duty. Yeah, duty. Um, okay, so like I said, I was bitching earlier about the, uh, people at the Van Gogh Museum today, right? I said that too. So, all right. I want to preface this with the certainty that I have, the understanding that I have. I am a unique animal when it comes to my master. I understand this. I know this. Okay? I do not expect everyone to know things that I know about Van Gogh. Oh, Van Gogh. So, you say it the American way, it sounds, you know, what you're used to. You say it the proper Dutch way, you sound like you have a hairball. Um, I wonder why the Van Gogh show, uh, Museum won't call me back for a job position. No. Um, so they were doing a thing today um, through Facebook Live for, uh, it was a Ask the Curator, right? And... So I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'll, I'm game, I'll listen, man, what do you got? You know? I figured they're not really going to give me too much new information, but I thought maybe I'll get something new out of it. Who knows? And unfortunately, I learned that lesson that I always keep forgetting, which is the... The human species will disappoint you. Um... Uh, that's cruel, and I shouldn't say it that way, but it's not wrong. Um, so here's what happened. I tuned in, right, and the first, one of the first things I hear, um, and, and this, she may have been asking exactly what the person, uh, the curator responded to, I just don't believe it. It's just, it seems like the way that it was phrased, it makes me think that she confused two paintings for being the exact same painting. And I can elaborate. Um, she was talking about, she asked them about how do they decide which paintings travel and which ones don't and, and you know, how do they make that decision or whatever. And she's brought up specifically that she's from Chicago and they had just seen, and that's the part that got me. They had just seen the bedroom there and now they see it here. And unless I am mistaken, and I don't believe I am, the bedroom has not been in the U.S. in many years. In fact, I think it might have been Van Gogh's Van Gogh's. Anyway, um, um, terrible person. Any Dutch viewers, I apologize. Um, typical ignorant American. Anyway, um, the uh, the thing about it was that um, so like I said, she's I think she's thinking that the bedroom which is in the permanent collection of the Art Institute of Chicago was the same one she was seeing there. That tweaked me a little bit. I mean, you know, not a huge problem, but it's just like, dude, you know, don't you realize that there's like more than one? Like, I don't know. Um, you know, some of his more famous paintings he did copies of. Like, I don't know. But again, I let that go. I was like, okay, maybe. And and the the curator responded with something talking about again how there was a show of all three um, bedrooms uh, versions, or whatever, uh, in Chicago, I guess, at some point. And and so it, I may be wrong. Like I said, and she may have been talking about this whatever special showing they had of them, all three together. So I could be wrong. 
and if I am, I, I do apologize for my statement of it. You know, I don't. That, I am not going to be very keen on following what shows are in Chicago, considering I can't go there. Yeah, you know, at any regular given time. Um, but so I was like, okay, whatever. I was kind of like it was like one of those things like I think she was asking a different question because I don't think she was just the way it seemed but whatever and then when I started getting tweaked right afterwards um, one gentleman asked them uh, how were they able to get all these Van Goghs from uh, all over the world to make the museum how do they convince people to let go of all these Van Goghs to make the museum? Now, I, I, I ought to preface this too. I gotta preface this. All of these questions were asked by people that like seem to want to qual qualify their uh, question by stating. I'm a big Van Gogh fan, you know, like, uh, uh, yeah, it's like there's always something in that regards. So that's what bothers me the most about it, I guess. Um, and I know it's a silly thing, but it does. Uh, and I'll explain more. But um, so now the fact that this gentleman was actually in the museum, okay, in the Van Gogh Museum. Now, I've never been myself, I won't lie. And so I could be wrong here, but I'm willing to bet you I'm not. That somewhere in that museum, you can find the history of it, like on a big fucking plaque somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, that they have somewhere pretty clearly telling you the story of the museum itself as well, because it sure shit's on their goddamn website. Um, you know, it's not that hard to... And if you, even if you knew Vincent's history generally, roughly, uh, you'd understand that the paintings in that museum are from the family's private collection that was, for a while there, mostly living in the apartment with you know, Joe and Teo. And so, you know, for as long as he was alive, I mean, six months, I guess, when he was alive. But, but you know, it's like... Um, they they kept it in the fucking house for a while. They like literally, if you knew the the, the Van Gogh's uh, prior to basically what 1970. Oh fuck! I'm gonna, now we're gonna pick it up. Oh, my card When did it open up? It was in the 70s, right? Because one was in the 70s. See, so this I don't mind you not knowing. This is something that makes sense. Uh, da -da -da. Open date. Uh, da -da 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 -da. Oh, no, no, no. How long things? History, 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 walls covered in Van Gogh paintings. Okay. At some point they actually described that they just not even lock the fucking door. Just walk in their house, see Van Gogh. Um, you know, obviously it was before Vincent really became Vincent. You know, but, um, so I was, uh, like this, this guy asked the question, you know, like I said, about how they were able to convince all these people to allow them to have Van Gogh paintings. And he's like, you know, they didn't, he didn't sell a lot when he was alive and this was all in the family's thing and I'm like sitting there like oh my god I'm listening and I'm going if I was this curator I would be screaming at this gentleman at this point like I would just be like like seriously have you ever read a book about him like anything like fucking goddamn like just holy shit like read something about him it's, or like I said it's probably in the fucking museum somewhere um and if it's not, if it's not something explaining, uh, you know, Johanna's uh, purpose in the, you know, and, and role in the uh, 
creation of the museum, then they, they're, they're doing her wrong. I mean, I don't think they would, though, because, I mean, I was on their uh, Facebook page the other day when it was the anniversary of her death, and, you know, I made a point to mention that I, I adore her in many ways because of the fact that she, she kept up Teo's fight long after he had died, um, you know. So, yeah. so that was one question I'm kind of uh, you know okay um, then someone asked if Vincent if they thought they asked the curator if they thought that Vincent found comfort uh, in his paintings from his troubles or if he used his painting to push his troubles out of his mind like and at that point, if I was the curator, I most certainly would have been like, read a fucking letter! Just one of his letters! Just any one! Just pick one! Um, because, uh, like, quite honestly, like, if you take any vent, vent like, I said, I said to a friend of mine, regarding this, I said, I said, I said, I told him, I, I went, if, if I were to make a printout of every letter Van Gogh wrote during the time that he was painting the 10 years he painted alright I make prints of each letter and I hang them on a wall alright, no it's hundreds of letters, whatever I just hang them on a wall now I told my buddy you could blindfold me spin me around 10 times and then have me throw a dart but I'll, I'll, I'll up the ante you can get me drunk blindfold me, spin me around as many goddamn times as you want up until the point where I throw up. You don't want to do that that far. Give me a dart and have me just generally aim me at the wall. And I will hit a letter that says something about how Vincent finds comfort in his artwork. I guarantee you that. It's like literally just, just fucking pick a letter. Or if you don't have something that tells you specifically, and as I said, it may not be an exact letter, you know, phrasing that she had put it in, per se, but it definitely would drive home the point. And if it does not say specifically that he's finding comfort in his work at the time, it may be because he is, in San Remy, not painting right now because they wouldn't let him have them, and at which point, yes, he'd be telling you how he's feeling separated from it and how he wishes he could. That's pretty much the only two areas you'll find. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh my god. And then the next question that I heard on this, um, I think I got a phone call, so I don't know if it was the exact question. I uh, might have stopped it while I was working. But the next question I heard was a woman who asked about sunflowers. We had one set of sunflowers right behind them, uh, the, behind the curator. And they said, uh, she says, the painting behind you guys, the, the sunflowers back there, that's one of Vincent's most loved paintings. Why do you think that is? And I was just like, I can't. I said, I'm done. <laughs> I was just like, I clicked it off. I was like, I can't. I can't. I'm, I was at my desk ready to start howling. Like, legitimately yelling at my computer screen. I, I was just, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't. I couldn't deal with it anymore. I was just like, oh my god. Here I was looking to have, like, like here's the thing. Oh, by the way, we're, we're really zoomed out. Hold on. Um, we're going a little bit, right? a little bit too far. There we go. Let me get you guys a little better view of the picture. Or else you can see the microphone. Right. All right. Sorry about that. It's rather really stupid. Again, I'm pissed off from the stream earlier. Not coming in. Um. Uh, what was I saying? Um, the. Uh, Oh, uh, the, the similar, like, I, I guess the, the best thing I could compare it to is what I was hoping for was something closer to when I did, went to the pop-up exhibit at the uh, King of Prussia Mall, which I do need to go back to. i gotta get, I got to get my prints from there. Um, the, uh, you know, the, the, the dude that 
I, I believe he works at the actual museum normally, but he's with the pop-up traveling show right now because he definitely had an accent and it sounded very Dutch to me. Again, I'm an ignorant American, so I can't be 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure it was Dutch. Uh, he um, he came over, you know, and he was talking to me a little bit, and I, I, I imagine he was trying to talk to me at first very much like a normal ignorant American. Um, and I made it pretty quickly clear that I, you know, I had seen the paintings that they were, uh, you know, having on display there um, in person before. And you know, I specified when I had seen them at the Van Gogh's Van Gogh's. And I, you know, I, I said, uh, you know, I was talking to him about some of the things that I seem to remember being different in the real life painting. Um, and saying about, you know, uh, like the, the bedroom, I mentioned about how we had been in Chicago, you know, two years ago and, and you know, whatever, and two years ago? three years ago. Last year was a short town, right? Yeah. Yeah, two years ago. So it was two years ago. You know, I so said that we had been in Chicago two years ago. We'd seen the bedroom version there. And I said, I had seen that one. You know, the Van Gogh's Van Gogh's. And I was talking to him. And, and then it became a little more of a conversation that was two guys that knew their shit talking to each other. Okay. More so than, you know, where he, I'm sure he's there to teach people. And he's not teaching me, I'm sure. You know, I think he knew he wasn't teaching me. And so he quickly, yeah, there were other people who came in, he moved on to them, and that's fine. But at least for a short time, we were two dudes just, you know, talking about an artist we like. And so that felt pretty good. And I guess I was looking for that from this as the curator thing, and what I got was, like, I mean, like I said, if, if they were asking specifics about technique or even I don't know like I don't, I don't know what I, I I guess I would not consider um, see it's hard for me it's really hard for me to ex try to figure out what I guess I, I expect a normal person to ask questions for because at this point any questions I have I would need a Ouija board that actually worked and I don't believe they do to get the answers for um, you know, like, I, I, I would have to talk to a man who's been dead since the late 1880s in order to answer my questions. There's no other person that can answer my questions, you know. Um, there was one good question I, I actually thought was a decent, like, hey, you know, did, uh, I mean, the answers were, see, the answer to me is I already knew it, um, so it's not like it's, but to, to someone that is, I hate to use this phrase, to someone that is normal. Um, and I'm not trying to use that as an insult other than insulting myself. Um, I, I, and I mean that truly, I'm, I'm, I mean that as a, I am not normal, I'm, I'm clarifying that. Um, I am qualifying that statement, okay. Um, to a normal person, I would see them not knowing this answer, which was they asked about if, if Vincent and Paul Gauguin had ever seen each other again after the incident in Arl. And again, I could, I could really see that. I could understand someone not knowing that. You know, it's, it's, you know, Vincent traveled all the fuck over where, you know, like, so you could see if perhaps like you know maybe Paul swung by in Auvers or something at some point and, and you know it was just a stopover or something on his way out of town on his way to the you know tropics or whatever you know or if they at least sort of made better amends before the end of it which they didn't because Paul Gauguin's an asshole but anyway um The, um, uh, 
Have I ever specified on here I really don't like Ogan? Yeah. I think I have. <laughs> He's an asshole. Anyway, um... Yeah, if you're the Gogan family, relatives, or whatever, uh, let's be honest, dude, he abandoned his fucking kids. And go fuck chicks in the Bahamas, like, you know, whatever, like. I'm not wrong. Or it was Polynesia, whatever, I don't know. Anyway, um, doesn't matter. It's fucking, he's an asshole. Um. So, the, uh,. Just a fucking one ray of fucking sunshine. Um, uh, but like I said, I could understand someone who's under a, a, a tertiary or, or, you know, a normal non-obsessive view of, of Vincent's life and work, I I would understand them not knowing that. You know? Um, so I, I, I thought that one was actually a good question. I mean, it makes me wish I had a, I'll answer this one button on there, but you know. Now, as like I said, I guess this is this is really where it boils down to. They're like, like this is what it felt like when I'll go back to that pop up exhibit that we had. All right, that um, or we have still still on King Prussian Wall. So the the gentleman with the Dutch accent had been over talking to us, and like I said, he at first came over talking to us like as if you know perhaps we didn't know anything, um, and. Like I said, eventually it just became more of us talking and shooting, like almost like talking shop. Um, and by the way, if YouTube cuts us because of fucking Faust playing in the background, I'll be pissed off. It's open source shit, dude. Anyway, um, verified. Uh, Alright, um, it's awfully low, so I can't imagine it's gonna cover it. But anyway. Anywho, um, so, like I said, but then, later on, and then I'm talking, like, three minutes later, after we had already scared away a Dutch accent dude, uh, another young girl comes over, like, you know, and now she is definitely someone working with the mall. You know, it was hired for the, yeah, you know, I don't know who runs the, the King Crush Mall. So I gotta, just, like, cut on my finger, just pitching like hell. Um, it was the index finger, I didn't give you this bird, so, anyway, um, you didn't notice the difference. Um, but anyway, the, uh, <laughs> this girl comes over and she's like, do you guys have any questions that I can help you out with? And it was like, I just literally looked at her and I started laughing. And I didn't mean to be rude. And I, I you know, if, if you're there, I don't remember your name. Um, I apologize for if I came off as rude. You probably don't remember who I am, but anyway. But if you did, and if you were, went home and were insulted that day, I apologize. Um, I mean, I did explain. I, could, you know, I have forgotten more than you will ever know. I didn't mean to, and that sounded rude too, I'm sure, but it's like, you know, it was that type of thing. It was like, yeah, you're not going to answer any Van Gogh questions for me. As I said, even the, the, the old dude with the Dutch accent wasn't going to surprise me with anything. The only thing he could have gotten me with is a bit, would have been something that I had forgotten. Be like, oh yeah, that would have been about all they would have gotten out of me. I remember that, and then I would have probably started spitting out the letter that you know, like, that actually came out of. So it's a. Uh... I guess I could have made it really clear. I am probably one of the few people you will ever know in your lifetime 
that actually has a Vincent shirt. And I don't mean that I have a shirt with, you know, Starry Night on it or anything like that. My shirt literally just says Vincent, dead center, of a big circle that has quotes about love primarily, you know, and, and uh, going around it. And I have never seen another human being that has ever had that shirt. I also have a hat. Do I have it? Oh, there it is. Look at this. Yeah, I'm going to start wearing this. Ah, fuck, it's around the other one. What are you doing over there? You shouldn't even be wearing that one. There you go. It's like a glove still. Huh? 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 Nobody has this fucking hat. Oh, no, this is it. Like you guys all see it all the time. Boom! That's why I don't accidentally hit the brim into the fucking painting, too. Which is actually what I'm more concerned about. Um, actually, it's funny. It's like this hat actually um, came in very handy. Uh, Years and years, 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 years ago. Yeah, everything happens years and years ago. Because anything happened recently sucks. Um, the um, my buddy Bungo and I used to be pretty active on the uh, DC message boards. Um, which I don't even know if they still exist. No idea, actually. Um, but anyway, we um, we used to regularly post on there, especially during the. Um, uh, Batman Hush series. Because um, that really got me buying comics again for a while. Because I was, I'd been out and, but I loved Jim Lee and I hadn't seen anything from him in a long time. And I was like, oh, fuck, Jim Lee's wrong Batman. I gotta fucking buy Batman. Um, and, you know, there was always this mystery around who Hush was, even though it was, like, not a mystery at all. Which, I won't lie, I was one of the people very disappointed that it turned out to be Tommy. But anyway, um, I really wanted him to be a red herring. And don't give me that, uh, Riddler did shit. Fuck that. It was Tommy. Tommy's hush. Anyway. Um, so. Uh, where was I? Um, the. Um, Um, so we're on the message boards, and Wizard World Philly was coming up. And, uh... This is when I actually, by the way, knew that I was stuck with my moniker of Menace Art. Too, by the way. Um, Wizard World Philly was coming up, and... and uh, we were all, you know, on the message boards. We are like, hey, uh, you know, who's going to Wizard World? Anybody going to Wizard World? Blah, 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 blah. And I said, hey, I'll be at Wizard World. And they're like, oh, we should meet up. How, you know, how are we going to know each other? We're from DC message boards. I don't know anybody's fucking face, you know? You didn't really have, like, you know, there's none of this Facebook shit or anything. I don't think MySpace was a thing yet. Um, I don't think so. Might have just been for me? I don't know. But, um... Uh, so I was like, hey, I know. Um... If you guys want to meet up with, you know, if you want to meet me or whatever, if you want to hang out, I said, I'll wear a hat I know no other person I've ever seen alive has. And this is it. I said, I'll wear my hat. It says Vincent on it. I said, it's in kind of yellowish lettering. It's a little faded now. I mean, it's like definitely dirty. Yeah, it's pretty filthy. Um, should check. I didn't put this on. I didn't check to see if there's spiders or anything that in here. This could be, who knows what the fuck could be in here. Anyway, um, I said, uh, I'll wear my hat that has Vincent on it. I said, there's no other person I've ever seen. I said, it's literally Van Gogh's signature. I think I even, like, sent everybody a link, you know, post, post a link with, like, what his signature looks like. And, uh, seriously, where the my small brush go? I don't know. Um, there it is. I can change perspective to see it. So I said, you know, so I'll wear that and, you know, if you guys want to meet, just look for that hat. 
and there's one person who actually spotted the hat and Jim is like, hey, you're Minasar. And that was Jim Lee. Apparently he was quite active on the message boards. He would stalk them regularly. Um, he would regularly post too about like uh, the Easter eggs. Um, if you have the Hush Ultimate Edition, whatever, um, or uh, yeah, I think it's in that one. Like the big fucking version of it. Um, yeah, they printed the like a lot of the, the stuff you posted on there. They printed that in the back of that this fucking chair. Who wants to die? Um, but uh, so I was like, holy shit, Jim Lee knows who the fuck I am. I mean, I literally said that right in front of him. I was like, oh my god, Jim Lee knows who I am. I was like, I got it. Hey, Jim Lee. Like, I, I literally turned into SpongeBob with the Kevin thing. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it was literally like, hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Hi, Jim. Yeah, like, literally, I wanted to follow him around the fucking, you know, convention. Hi, Jim. Um, but, uh, now I'm feeling better. I'm starting to get there. Good memories. Let's fight off the shit day day things. Anyway, um, so it was a uh, it was kind of funny. I was just like like I, I literally was like, oh my god, Jim Lee of all the people in this goddamn place, it's Jim Lee who recognized me. I'm like wow, that's like yeah, literally. Th- 12 year old me you know, or 13 year old me that freaked out when X-Men 1 came out was like oh my fucking god it's Jim Lee you know like it was hard enough that when I had spotted him because literally I was like like we were at Albert Moy's um, uh, booth there or whatever and that's his dealer and, and you know we were like just like Bungo and I are literally like looking through the pages some of them were of Hush some were from you know uh, other books like Divine Right and you know um, I think there was some old X-Men stuff in there too actually and I was just like I was like drooling over them like, like oh my god I would kill everyone in this convention center if I could like just bring one of these home without having any consequences could I imagine killing everybody would probably have consequences but anyway I digress I'm just guessing I'm no legal expert I'm just guessing but anyway, I um, so I'm sitting there, like I said, I'm drooling over these pages, and you know, Bungo's looking through a few, and I looked up, see what he was looking at, and I looked up, and I, there's there's a link, and I was like, Bungo, Bungo, like I literally, you know, like I'm turning, you know, Cam Fry in, in um, Ferris Bueller's Day Off sees Ferris's dad next to him. Look, oh. Or, you know, like that thing, like he said, got that face, like, look behind you. Or like that, like, you know, I, that's what I turned into. I was literally like, oh my god. I was like, bumbo, bumbo. He's like, what? I'm like, it's Jim fucking Lee. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, it's Jim fucking Lee, right fucking there. He's like, holy shit, dude, say something. I'm like, I'm not gonna say it all. It's fucking Jim Lee. Right. And so, you know, Jim's, uh, I was like, dude, he's talking business. I can't bother. I can't bother. He's fucking talking business. He's talking Albert. Talking business, I can't do it. You know, and then just before we left, I was like, "All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something. I'm gonna say something." I was like, "Excuse me, Mister Lee." I was like, "Dude, I just want to let you know, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan." And that's why he saw the hat. He goes, "Hey, you're Vincent." I was like, "Jim Lee knows who I am." Turned into like literally every comic book nerd stereotype in your life. Like that, literally one drop of a hat. I just, you know, no pun intended. Um, like I flat out was like. <laughs> Like the inside me, here's 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 what was happening literally inside of my head. Um, I have a picture of my oldest daughter. Um, a place around here called Linville Orchards. Um, yeah, and it's like the. Uh, I should need a little more cereal, plain cereal. Yeah, that'll work. I think. Um, it's like one of those uh, a lot of places out. You know, it's like a f- active farm type thing that you know you go and you take your kids and they run through pumpkin patches and bullshit or whatever. You know, stuff like that. Um, 
So we're at Linville Orchards, and, and one of the things they have is a little playground area. And they have like a um, tractor there or whatever, right? And I have this picture of Allie when she's, you know, like a year old, maybe. And she's sitting there, and little, little chubby legs. She had the fattest little legs. Alright, she's sitting up there holding the thing, and she's got this face like, and, and I always quote, you know, just call it, Allie Drive Tractor! Like, that's my, you know, running, um, title for that picture or whatever kind of thing, right? Just her screaming, Addy Dry Tucker! Because she's, you know, she's a year old. Like, not, nothing. You know, like, she don't know nothing. Probably not even that. Maybe, well, she might have been a year and a half. Um, but she's just so chunky. And so, like, it's just funny. Anyway. But that's what, like, literally was happening in my head. So that's this, this hat story. And I just realized I turned into, like, Beast Boy from Teen Titans Go. You, you know how I got this watch? I says, I says, I says to him, you can't have the watch. It's my watch now. You gotta dig it on fast. Uncultured swine. Like my headphones died. What am I gonna do? finish this thing tonight. Like, not the painting, but this part. But again, I wasted too much fucking time arguing with this stream. Anyway, gotta, I gotta put the bad thoughts out. Gotta push them away. Um, let's see what else we can think about that's good thoughts, happy thoughts. Think happy thoughts. Not being in a slingshot would make me very happy! Um, Cranking up. I don't like that sound. I'm gonna drop frames. That's good. Uh, let's see here. So I had other stuff planned, and I don't know what the hell. Yeah, I let my mind wander back to that um, this, this new potential style. As I've been playing with this, um, these color scheme ideas and stuff, or not color scheme, but these, these figure uh, patterning schemes or whatever, I have, um, I noticed something today, or oh no, yesterday, I it was yesterday, I actually noticed it. Um, but this, I guess it was expanded on today, is a good way to put it. Um, that, when I was in high school, I worked at a tuxedo shop in our neighborhood, uh, a place called DiCarlo's, which is not there anymore. And um, I worked there for a couple of years, and uh, I actually really liked it there. I, I, you know, it actually became something where, at one point, I got upset with the owner more so not as a boss but like almost like a family like argument type thing and, and so I became very upset by her and uh, you know uh, that's when I ended up quitting uh, but the thing was you know I, I I did like it there and and one of the things I liked especially was I liked some of the, the tuxedos and the the accessories around them um, like the vest and shit like that, and I was um, particularly fond of like one specific type of paisley vest that they had. And I realized that in this new, these new structures I'm playing with, that they kind of had a um, resemblance to some of these paisley patterns, as I recall them. Um, not all of them, just one every now and then one would pop up and go, oh, "That kind of looks like that paisley," you know. So I was like, huh, you know, let me, I was like, well, let me see if I could find anything regarding the, the like I said, the, the, the shop closed, Dolly, the, the owner, closed the shop years ago. I said, but let me see if, uh, let me see if I can find anything about them. And I, I'm sad to report that Dolly had passed away uh, 
two years ago. A little over at this point. Um, Jane, you fell down again, you bitch. It's you or the monkey there, but lots of chimp, but I need to paint my balls. Um, But the, uh, so then I started, like, kind of pseudo-cyber-stalking. Like, I, I just wanted to see if I could see if any, like, I wanted to find out if her son Mark uh, or Lou were on Facebook or something like that. You know, in case I ever do want to, like, really, re really actually reconnect with them. I haven't, I just wanted to see what's up with them if I could right now, just to make sure they're both okay. Um, I can't tell 100%, but it looks like they're all right. everybody's doing all right. But what I did find, actually, like, kind of by accident, was her grandchildren. Um, which is kind of neat, because I remember them, too. I, I remember them all coming by the tuxedo shop. They probably don't know me from Adam at this point, uh, most certainly, but it was kind of interesting. Because they all actually kind of ended up um, almost exactly as I expected them to end up. And, uh, That was kind of interesting. It was just like, oh, okay, look at that. You guys are like, legitimately every single one of you, as I imagined you when you were kids. I mean, like, yeah, I couldn't figure out their careers at the time, but like, kind of where they would fall, I was pretty close on. I was, I was probably, I was, made me kind of chuckle. And that's not critiquing them. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm critiquing them. That's. It's just like, okay, look at that. Look at that. It's just bet them to be kind of there, and that's kind of where they ended up. And yeah, they look like they're everybody's doing okay, and that's good. So if you guys see this, Mark, Lou, uh, Pete, you guys don't remember me. I'm sure. A thousand times over, you don't remember me, but I know you guys. I'm glad to see you guys are doing all right. Mark, I wish you could have found your father, because uh, let's go along with well, Mark. Actually, you know, Lou, too. Lou will always give me a ride home. And Lou actually knew my uh, parents' neighbor. We went to school together. So that was always kind of cool. They were all good guys. I'm trying to remember some of the other like secondary characters. That's the problem. So again, the problem with the when when shit went haywire up here in the brain for me, um, I lost a lot of stuff. So I, like, there's a lot of names that, that I lost. So I, like I can't remember. Um, and I'd seen him too. This is what pisses me off. So I'd actually seen him relatively recently. Um, that is when I was still working for Sears. Um, when I was working for Quest Diagnostics and working at Sears at the same time, uh, he had come in. Uh, I think he worked for Lord and Taylor, um, and I can't remember his name. Um, but he was a guy that would come in on occasion. Um, helped Ollie out with extra tailoring when he needed. He was a really good tailor. I guess that's what he does over at Lord Taylor. He's probably tailing, so. Um, Salamir? Salamir? I can't, I can't remember it. It's gone. And it pisses me off. I really wish I could. Like, it almost makes me want to go into Lord of Taylor, see if he's still, like, three, four rounds, if he's still there. But then I know I'd be harassed all the time, like, can I help you with anything? No, no, no. And I'm not trying to shoplift. Which is, I, I know that will work to keep them right off my back. They'll never look at me, right? Just anytime you want to make sure no one's bothering you at a store, like, you know, you don't have to worry about uh, their uh, loss prevention team following you around. Just shout out. I'm not planning to shoplift. They'll leave you alone, I guarantee you. And if you believe that, I have some farmland I'd like to sell you in Florida. Beautiful place called the Everglades. I mean, it says Ever right in the name. It's beautiful.
I got a bridge to sell you in New York too. Right, in, right, crosses right over to Brooklyn for you. It's one of those weird things to like, all right, when I think about this new ideas, these, these new color ideas that I'm having, that, or painting idea, style, whatever, like this right here actually is bothering me because in this new idea, all this texturing, all this stuff, trying to get the specific feel of the rock as opposed to getting the feel of the color or getting this idea of this new way to represent it all is, like I said, I'll have to, I'll have to minimalize it to complicate it. And I don't know if this makes much sense without context of it, but... It does seem like we made it through the night without any more drops. So I don't know what it was that was causing all that, and I hope to God it doesn't happen ever again. I probably have to, just for sake of peace in my house, attempt to put Fortnite back on to see if that, you know, and hope that that was not the issue. I had the feeling it was. I had the feeling because it was on an automatic like everything, that it was fucking up everything, but I can't say for sure. Could have been one of the other bullshit, you know, malware or garbageware, or what, what do they call it? Um, there's, there's a term that I'm looking for. Um, is it like trashware? No. Garbageware? I, I don't remember what it's called. Shovelware, like that, like that type of thing. Shovelware, like type shit that I took off. It could be any of the, one of those two. Um, so I kind of have to, I have to kind of work through hopefully backwards to figure out what may have actually been the cause of that. Because as I said, I, my daughter really wants to be taught how to play Fortnite, and I can't do it, so my son has to do it, but he has to do it with a different account, so I have to have my account. Unless I can go through and maybe on his PS4, like his, she's crazy, so I hope that I get to play it, right? I'm calling it his. Um, it's mine, God damn it! I paid for it. Um, it may be something that, like, he, like, if I can log in and out of um, my Epic account, right, Games account, whatever, and then he can log in back to his and whatever, back and forth. If we can do that through the PS4, that's probably the best way to do it for us to make sure that it doesn't have this issue again. Um, This happen more often. It recentered me. So I'm like cool and groovy again. All right, I'm not cool. I get that. But the fact that I know the technical issues prevented anybody from really joining tonight, following, and I'm at 42 followers, right? That's what I'm at now. Um, uh, 42, yeah, my 42, cool. The, um, I will say one more thing regarding the, the final push. I've been debating how to do it. First off, I didn't realize that, um, I had to pay for Gleam, like 10 bucks to run a contest, fuck that. Sorry, I'm poor and cheap. And those two work very well together for me. 
Um, and I'm not going to go bucking that system anytime soon. Um, but, so I figured if I hit 50, this is what I'm going to do. All right. Um, I'm just going to assign, like I'll literally go through the followers list. And for the most part, it seems that Twitch has put it in as the followers have come in. Um, that that seems to be how I, I view it when I look at it. It seems like everybody, as I look at those names, they look at me. They look like they are still in the order of which people click to follow me. Um, and what I will do here, I'll screen capture it and everything. I, I will make sure that you guys can tell that there's no bullshit here. I, I really do want to make sure it's clean and on the up and up. Because only because there are family and friends that are followers of me. Um, I guess uh, I maybe should eliminate them. Uh, I'll, uh, this will be tough. Yeah, I guess I'll, maybe I'll eliminate them. I'll eliminate the family. How about that? I'll eliminate family. That seems. Uh, let's go see my cousins. Uh, I don't know. I'll eliminate immediate family. So my daughter can't. My my mom can't. You know, they're both followers on here. So I'll strike their names from it. So if I hit when I hit fifty. Um. I'm gonna run a con. I'm, I'm, it's not even really gonna be a contest. It's literally gonna be. I'm gonna get a random number generator. And everyone's gonna be literally given a number from the time they came in. So one, I think, is um, oh, what's, his, what's his name? Shit! Oh my god! I think you should remember your first, right? Oh, I'm going back in here one more time. Oh, this is fuck up the stream. Followers. No, mute it. Quiet, quiet. Don't repeat it. Followers. No, no. Go away, go away, go away, go away. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, this all seems to be in order, so. Uh, let's go down here. Let's go down here. There's another vortex with that. There we go. There we go. Uh, I guess Mike was second my first. And then, uh, Illust Music. We would have been like second. So those guys are I remember the first night. Uh, I really big up followers. Uh, excuse me. Um. So, if you are a follower on here, um, like I said like Mike would be one, Illus Music would be two. You know, I mean, literally up to the Art Nerd, right? So I think that was Katie from my Facebook page. All right, Art Nerd, fifteen twenty four. Yeah, buddy Matt. Like he'd be he'd be four, like uh, Flamendo five, like whatever it is, as, as it goes up. All right, literally from first all the way up to fifty, if I get to it. Um, everyone will be given a number in that order. Um, and what I'll do is I'll pull out a random number generator. And as I said, I'll, I'll screen capture it in case anybody wants to see it screen captured. I mean, technically you should be able to go into my followers list and see it just like I do it, but whatever. I want to make sure it's clean on the up and up. I guess I'll make a lot of screen captures. Oh, we'll see. Um, and I'll do a random number generator. Uh, I guess because I'm going to eliminate my mom and my, my daughter. It'll be 1 through 48. And I will give away a drawing and I think one of the posters. On the, uh, Uh, View of Tulips posters. If I can get, again, where I'm a little more not so concerned about, like, literally bills every week, um, like, haunting me on a daily basis, um, then I will uh, maybe at some point do another one you know, where I'll do a gleam. I'll pay the bucks for it or whatever. 
and I'll do it like if you follow me on Facebook, you get an entry. If you follow me on YouTube, you get an entry. If you follow me on Instagram, even I don't fucking use it, you get an entry. Um, you know, I'm, I think I'm going to start Instagram again. I took it all, like, I, I took it off my phone because I was, like, not, like, I was following and, and observing more than I was using it, and it was killing my fucking data program. Like, I was, I was burning through data like crazy. So, I gotta get back to it, use it as, like, actual promotional material. Um, but yeah, so, but for now, it's just literally gonna be, if we get to 50... Uh, a random number generator um, will pick one through well one through forty eight. So I'll eliminate the family members. And um, you know, we'll give away drawing, give away a print, and posters, whatever, the big posters. Not big. I had a good size. Not big. I think big, I think like when I have that I can't even open because I literally have nowhere I can hang it up. This is so large I couldn't put it in this house. That's big. But anyway. Um, yeah, so we'll, uh, like I said, we'll do that, but I gotta hit 50 first. So if you know anybody, you're like, hey, you might like to see a guy paint really slowly and get angry when his stream gets fucked up and lose his temper like it's, you know, no problem then just tell them to come along. Um, yeah, can't hurt. Doesn't doesn't hurt your odds of winning, technically, right? The odds would be literally a random number generator. So that would be that. That's all I got to say. Okay, there's like some carving down here. Oh, I almost missed that. Let me make sure to put that in there. The, um, better do it now too before they dry on me. Probably would be a smart thing. Let's try spinning. That's a smart move. Alright, sorry. Little Annie just popped out from me. By the way, alright, I, 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 gotta, I gotta get this monkey off my back right now uh, before I forget it. So, my buddy uh, Steve and I at work, um, we shoot the shit all the time about nerd stuff, and, and one of the things I sent him today was, it was a... Um, Video from What Culture, I believe. I think it was What Culture. Which was um, plot twists that almost happened that would have ra ruined famous movies. Okay? And that's... It's kind of important. Um, to hear. Because, like, why they're... You know... They weren't fucking around. But that's that title. Um... Here's the, what, the one that got me. The one that really was like, oh my god. Because it proves, beyond a shadow of a doubt, what happened with the Star Wars prequels. Okay? And I know there's some people that like to defend them now, even though they're still fucking garbage. But anyway. Um, and it's funny, because usually the people that defend the prequels are the ones that bash um, the newer movies. Da, da, da. Oh, shit. that one. Yeah, let's go like that. Let's go down a little harder. I'm gonna start doing like an English E, and I know it's fucking wrong. Um, there's a line there. And that connects back to this thing back here. I don't think I've quite gotten the same angle, but it's okay. It's not gonna be too much of a screw up there. Anyway, um. The way the video had panned out was that they were talking about, at one point they bring up um, Empire Strikes Back. And apparently one of the other twists that was going to happen 
and I'm not joking about this. This is legitimately was in the video, and what was the original plan was that at the dinner party that they had, so to speak, if you want to call it a dinner party, um, you know, where like they walk in the room, you know, and Vader's there, and he Han pulls out the blaster, and Vader's just you know, and he's like, "We would be honored if you would join us for dinner." Okay, that dinner party. Um, there we go. It's a little better. It's a little closer now. That dinner party um, was apparently going to have Vader apologize to Leia about how mean he was on the Death Star. I'm sorry, what? Like, we're gonna have the Dark Lord of the Sith. Look, I'm sorry, I was a dick. You know, like, shit happens, I'm sorry. Like, you know, my bird. Like, all right, you know. And see, that to me says exactly what happened with the prequels. And you go, how do you make that jump a logic, Brian? And I'll explain. And then we'll call it night, because this is going too long. Um, I still have to work in the morning. This fucks. Um, the thing is that, see, back in the old Star Wars days, the original movies, George had people that told him no. Okay, he had, you know, producers at Fox and shit that would be like, no, that's a stupid fucking idea. Don't you fucking do it. You know? And they'd have rewriters, and his wife would re-edit shit and, and work it out so that it would, like, not be terrible. Okay? These are all legitimate things that, that happened in the original trilogy. You can go look this shit up if you want to. You don't have to just trust me. Don't trust everything you hear on the internet. Abraham Lincoln told me that. Um... shit. Nobody else is here to do it. Anyway. Um, so, yeah. The, the thing is, like I said, back then, George had people that told him no. You know? They were legitimately like, you know, bad dog! George, bad dog! You know? And they'd rub his nose in the shit and, and so he'd stop doing it. But by the time we got to the prequels, actually by the time we got to Return of the Jedi, actually, um, which is how we got Ewoks. George no longer had these no people. He had yes men. And there must have been one or two that still had balls to say something to him during Return, because Return isn't absolutely terrible. You know? It's just not as good as Empire. Um, and, uh... And I guess there's some that may debate that, and I don't, you know, whatever. We can have that debate some other time. But the thing is, that, like I said, they, uh, they were people that would literally tell George no back in the old days. And there's certain creative decisions were made that then they said no, and then George had to go, you know, went along with it, and things were better. And if you need any more proof of that, look at the special editions. Because the special editions were all shit. You know, all the stuff that he was... I didn't get to put that in here because this, that, or the other thing. No, it was because his, yeah, his ex-wife had actually cut it all out. And then he put it back in. That is not a made-up story either. You can literally look that shit up. Um, so as I was saying, George had no people and then... He didn't have no people for the prequels. So pretty much whatever George had written down in the first draft of episode one, episode two, episode three, that's what happened. They didn't really shoot outside of that. They didn't change much. So a lot of the shit that they had, that was all you got. Yeah. I mean, the... the I think it's in the... Um, making of of episode two where he like literally comes out of an office like I've been in there for you know two days and here it is and I'll script like, like that's it he was 
That's what they did. They, they, they just said yes. And everybody said, oh, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was, that was literally in the fucking how they made, yeah, how they made it thing. So, if you see that, that you know, twist that almost happened, but somebody said no to them and stopped it and made it a lot better movie. Cause can you imagine Empire Strikes Back and Vader's like, dude, sorry, I was a dick. I apologize. Look, it's just more. So much pressure for my boss. He's a fucking asshole. You know, like, come on. Okay, well. Um. Yeah, tonight sucked. Not gonna lie. Um. Because I pissed away way too much fucking time trying to get this fucking thing working. We should have had this done. And we've just been spending tomorrow night on this. Possibly Sunday finishing it, if not before that. So that sucks. Because now we gotta waste most of the time tomorrow on that, and we'll be lucky if we even get into the center area here. Um, and that's uh, the, the longer this continues, let's put it this way the longer that I'm forced to not be experimenting with what I want to experiment with in order to keep making shit the way I make it the more difficult this is going to be getting for me. Harder and harder. And I know nobody's here. And that's kind of makes it why this makes it an easy confessional. So, tomorrow night, hopefully the fucking stream works to start and I don't have to keep fucking with it for an hour. Um, and, you know, whatever. Hopefully it'll work. Um, I'm not going to push anything else. So that's, that's about it. And I...